Oh boy, last week I featured this in my ginormous haul video, Costume National Homme in the Parfum version, and today I've got my full review of this and also comparing it to the original. Look at how much I've used up of this one. It's really good. I've had it now for almost a month. Um, I, I was going to review it, but one thing led to another and it just didn't get to it, and I wanted to wear it and enjoy it, and I am really enjoying it. It's really, really a great fragrance. Just uh, more of a luxury version of this, but I'll let you know about the differences and what I think about the fragrances uh, and of course what I think about the, the new one. And also, what's going on with Costume National? Why are they not selling here in the States anymore? Anyway, all coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Costume National Homme and the new Parfum version. This is actually a launch that uh, came out last year. So it's not that new. Also, it was very, very hard to get. Now I'm seeing a pop-up at discounters. I actually got this one sent over from France, so it wasn't from a discounter. And uh, while I've had it, many of you were telling me or uh, mentioning that it's now at the discounters, go buy one, and I'm like, I already have one. It's a little late. I mean, it's been around for uh, a good year, and it's just a really, really great version of the original fragrance from 2009. Either way, Costume National Own Parfum, full review. Before I get to the fragrance though, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So how many of you are fans of the original? Um, this is one that I have and um, I reviewed it initially on my Man Loves Cologne channel from a long, long time ago. I also have a full review of this on the current channel. Uh, it, it's also going back probably like four or five years. So I've known about the fragrance for some time. I knew it was created by Dominic Ropion, yada yada. It's Eau de Parfum concentration here and they've given us a, a Parfum concentration here. But I've also noticed that from wearing, they're not that much difference. Just a more luxury version of the original is here. And after doing some research and getting and you know, putting my notes together, I figured out that the Eau de Parfum is 23% concentration. The Parfum is only 25% concentration. So you're only getting 2% more uh, of perfume oils in this between this. So is it really necessary to have this one? Well, let me tell you. So this is a 2020 launch. 11 years after this came out, this launched. It's created once again by Dominic Gropion, my favorite perfumer. Absolutely love the sky's creations. He does some amazing things. Although he does also do some uh, not necessarily amazing things for uh, the designers, the mass market, but I think outside of those fragrances, his stuff, his work is really, really amazing. So as I said, this is a Parfum version, but again, a uh, Parfum version at 25%, where Eau de Parfum version at 23%, so uh, not much difference between the two. Uh, notes here are cardamom, grapefruit, bergamot, that's for top notes, heart notes, patchouli, cinnamon, vetiver, Finally, in the base notes, we've got musk, sandalwood, cystus labdanum. So immediately I noticed that there's no mention of cloves here, whereas this has cloves featured in the notes. In addition to, there, there's the cinnamon here, which is definitely here, but there's also thyme in this one that's also not featured in this one. But what's going on with the fragrance? So to me, the fragrance wears a lot more alive, a lot more three-dimensional, a lot more luxury, a lot more deeper, a lot more richer. But it wears very, very similar to the original fragrance. So when I was testing it out, I thought, yes, I'm still picking up cloves. I guess I get a little bit of a thyme quality, lots of cinnamon though, but lots of cloves as well. So I guess they must have left the cloves out here uh, all along. But to me, uh, it starts off with that cardamom and the citruses. So there's, there's some bitterness and there's some zinginess, uh, spiciness in the grapefruit. They kind of work together really well with the cardamom. And then of course there's some bergamot. So it's a citrusy, spicy start. And then cinnamon, you know, kind of, you know, develops. Cinnamon is uh, pretty much what's running the show here. And of course, as I said, I do get lots of cloves as well. The cloves has just been left off. 
And for me, when I used to wear this one a lot, there was a time I was really, really wearing this one a lot, right around 2014. I discovered this in 2013, I think around then. So I guess uh, about four or five years after this had initially launched, I was wearing it a lot. And I, at that time I realized all these spices is reminding me of a chai tea experience because cardamom, cinnamon, cloves are all featured in, in additional uh, you know, spices as well, end up in a chai tea. So I get a very tea-like quality here, and of course I'm getting that here as well, but I'm getting a more of an expensive tea uh, you know, experience rather than this one. It is a little wimpier for sure, ne definitely noticeable. I mean, that's why I keep saying this one seems a little more alive, a little more three-dimensional, a little deeper, a little reach, uh, richer. And of course, it seems uh, like I'm getting more of a luxury tea experience here at this time. But in, in addition to the cinnamon, we've got some uh, patchouli and vetiver in this one as well. So there's some, uh, you know, earthy touches and woody touches in the heart, along with lots of cinnamon. So here you're kind of having this kind of like tea experience, but very, very distinguishable notes. Cardamom stands out. You definitely experience the zinginess from the grapefruit. Bergamot, not so stand out as much, but patchouli, lots of it. You experience a ton of it. Uh, cinnamon, loads and loads of cinnamon. It's a, like a cinnamon hot, um, those little hot candies, um, but along with a lot of other spices mixed in, kind of that kind of an experience with this one. That's why this kind of reminds me of tea, chai, but focusing on cloves and uh, cinnamon a lot with, you know, cardamom as well. So it's kind of like a tea, spicy tea experience. Holidays comes to mind as well, drinking these, this particular very spicy tea during the holidays. But eventually this settles to an amber. Um, of course, Cistus labdanum is what creates the amber touch. There's some light smokiness there. There's some sweetness there. Not very vanillic, if at all. More of an amber experience, but a smoky amber contrasted with sandalwood. And of course, there's some muskiness here. Uh, it's definitely still very spicy. Uh, you know, the cinnamon kind of bleeds into the base notes. And so we get basically a cinnamony, amber, uh, sandalwoody kind of a creaminess here with musk. Very, very delicious fragrance, really, really amazing. Again, this version is definitely solid, but when you experience this one, you experience the more luxury version of it. Uh, you experience the richer qualities, the deeper, more dense, and of course, everything feels more three-dimensional. It feels more alive and more fresh, as in not necessarily fresh notes, but more like, you know, fresh as in like you just picked a vegetable, it's fresh and it's new kind of a thing rather than like it's been sitting around aging. Whereas I'm, I'm not saying this is aged or like it, it smells old or anything, but definitely this one is the more luxury version. But there is a negative that is with this particular fragrance. If you have this and you're on a budget, you definitely do not need this. You don't. If you don't have this, I mean, I'm sorry, if you don't have this and you're looking for a new spicy fragrance, definitely go for this. Definitely go for this. If you are a collector like me and you have this and you love it, then definitely get this because you're going to enjoy it. It's The fragrance is so, so close. And that's why I'm saying that there, there's, there's clovey touches here that I'm not seeing uh, mentioned, but I'm experiencing. So the fragrance wears very, very similarly to me. I, I, I almost feel like it's an identical fragrance, just everything is just more intense, deeper, richer, as I said, I keep saying, more alive, more three-dimensional. So those are kind of things that come to mind with this fragrance. It's a really, really great smell. One of Dominic Ropion's greatest creations. Um, it's uh, something he did, I don't know, has he done anything similar to this? I don't think so. But he's done a lot of fragrances for Costume National. And if you don't know Costume National, it's an Italian fashion house, very small, very, very small fashion house. The fragrances and the clothes used to be sold at Barney's. So Barney's closed down in early 2020, and I thought to myself, uh, what's going to happen with Costume National? And I think this is what happened with Costume National. I think because Barney's was basically selling this stuff, I don't think we have any real retailers selling the, these fragrances here. I think that's why this didn't make it here. And also their latest fragrance for women, also created by Dominic Ropion called Supergloss, has not made it here as well. And they have that new one by Julien Rasconet. Is it coming here? I don't know. I really don't know. I personally think I'm kind of venturing off here, but if you guys don't know about Costume National and also a sister brand of theirs, they have strictly a 
niche perfume house that the people behind the fragrances have also created called Juice Box. I think they might have sensed that Barney's is going to close and maybe they launched this niche house. I don't know. I really don't know what the, the business decisions behind the scenes are, but definitely this brand is not really found at retailers much. And of course, I did see them at Barney's. That's where I saw them first. So since maybe that shut down and uh, that's why we're not seeing their fragrances here either way they'll appear or arrive at discounters we'll have chance of getting getting them and of course if we're visiting you know like europe and places like that where they're selling these we can pick them up there but hopefully they'll find some distribution i don't know we shall see but i'm really really loving this one again if you have this you're on a budget you don't need a similar fragrance don't get this if you don't have it you're looking for a new spicy fragrance get it. I think it's a great fragrance. It'll be perfect for the holidays, for cold cold days and, you know, winter days and things like that. Perfect. Really, really great. Um, and if you're a collector and you want the Parfum version, get, definitely get it as well. But one thing, one more thing I want to say, this par Parfum version of this fragrance is not like the Parfum version of Dior Homme. Uh, whereas that had a lot of massive projection, big cloud. This one does have that, and again, it's very similar to this, just a tiny bit more. It doesn't really go to the extra mile of being this kind of like beastly uh, experience, which is not always have to be. You don't have to have beastly fragrances, but I think this is a great smelling fragrance and I love this particular version in comparison to this. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on uh, Costume National Om Parfum. Look, I'm really enjoying this one. It smells really, really great. I bought this brand new and I wore, I've wore it a lot. Um, I bought it when it was still warm here. Today it's raining um, and I think it'll smell great in the rain but in the warmth it actually even was better smelling. Things were richer at that time. I think the warmth kind of adds this extra blooming uh, touch to the fragrance that cold doesn't. Of course when your body heats up though it'll you'll experience that but just around being around heat um, does some things to fragrances that are not achieved in the colder days. But anyway, um, I'm enjoying it. Check it out if you can. Get a sample if you can. It's a great smelling fragrance. Definitely worth it if you are a collector like me or are looking for a new spicy fragrance that'll remind you of like really intense chai tea. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. Let me know if you've sampled Costume National Own Parfum or you have not. Perhaps you've been a fan of this one, the original in the Eau de Parfum. Do you enjoy this particular uh, scent style and are you looking forward to sampling this or buying it if you have uh, been wanting it and you have this and um, you've been wanting to check out the Parfum version. Uh, let me know. Put some comments down and also let me know. Are you a fan of Dominic Ropion fragrances? Do you like his style and uh, the creations he does? He does do spicy very well. I also like another fragrance of his, Portrait of a Lady. Another very, very spicy fragrance, this time with roses. So I think he's a great perfumer. I do have a full video on the channel of Dominic Ropion fragrances top 20 go catch that if you haven't caught that but either way thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please do list below please like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye